I want you to remember one day from January 2022. Can you remember it in detail? Can you remember how you woke up? What were you doing and what were you wearing? Who did you talk to and what were your thoughts, your goals, your intentions for the whole year? Or do you remember only something special about the day, only day one? Can you remember what was before and after it? And you're sitting here, you're listening to TED Talks. Is it the result of that day? Can you connect that day and this day? Have you changed throughout the year? And do you think now that, oh my god, the year passed and I didn't even notice? And now you probably think, it's not the year, it's my life. And can we just take a moment, please? Take your phones away, don't count, don't think, don't do anything. Just be here at this time. Okay, let's go. Most probably, during these five seconds, you were like, am I supposed to do something? Or did you forget her speech? Well, if it's just five seconds, they're so tangible. Why don't you remember the days of 1,414 minutes? You can now say that, well, it's the matter of being engaged. It's partially true. When you're engaged, your brain releases three chemicals, which is acetylene that helps you to ensure that the weight of the task of the focus is greater than the distractions. It's dopamine that helps you to tailor your mental activity to this particular task. And it's not my friend that ensures that your persistence, that promotes your vigilance. And with the combination and release of these substances, you are drawn into a so-called flow state, the state of full engagement. During this state, you are basically at the lowest level of self-referential thinking. It means that you forget to perceive that you're at this place at this time. And scientists suggest that for children, time seems to be faster than for adults. And why is that? Because the child is always engaged? Well, partially, yeah, okay. But at that time, the child tries to memorize something, tries to remember something and to know something new. For elderly, they are alike, they are similar, they know everything, or at least some kind of everything. And does it mean that it's inevitable that in the future time will be a slowdown and now it's flashing? Well, the brain doesn't memorize the routine. And what is the routine? There's something that you're accustomed to, there's something that you've been doing for so many years. And can you remember the day? of your studies or of your work. Can you remember it from the beginning till the end, again with details? Or do you remember only something that triggered your emotions or feelings or thoughts? Was it a talk with the colleague, a promotion, a salary, an exam or presentation? And the thing is that when there is something new, the brain forms a neural connection. And this ensures that this day is stored in your memory. This is when you remember the day. And this topic kind of grabbed my attention, because I live life full of events, concerts, I meet a lot of people, and I do a lot of self-development stuff. And when I reflect on the months, I really remember many days. I know that my life is prolonged. My perception of time is quite extended. But at the same time, it was just spring yesterday. I was planning my summer holidays. I was so excited that I'm going to finish that year of studies and I'm going to like, fly away somewhere. And does it mean that anyway, time will be flashing? And can we stop it? I was searching, I was watching videos and doing some research. And the only thing that I found was the theory of relativity. That says that the faster you move, the slower you perceive the time from a static observer's position. What does it mean? That for someone who is doing nothing and you're speeding up, the time will be faster than for you. Is it true? Well, I'm not sure. Because there are lots of constraints and you need to move them with the speed of life or light, basically. So, 
At the same time, Einstein said that uh, time is relative and it depends on your frame of reference. So what is the frame of reference? If it said that it's relative, does it mean that we need to compare something? Well, for me, the frame of reference was my life. I am used to being in a hustle and bustle, I'm having all my days packed and I'm always doing something, basically. But at the same time, I thought like, what if I have one day of doing nothing? Not even scrolling social media, not even going somewhere or doing my household chores. Will it be helpful? Turns out to be yes. Because at that moment, when I was just sitting, doing nothing, staring at the wall, my mom thought that was crazy. And I realized that I have the week that passed, I have seven days of seven events, of seven working and studies. And at that time, I understood that I don't remember these days. I remember only moments. I remember only something that provoked emotions, that provoked thoughts. And at the same time, I had another Sunday of doing my similar activities like household chores, cleaning, and watching movies. And I don't remember either of these Sundays. But the thing is that after the practice of really doing nothing, you're just sitting here pursuing the time, and it seems to be so long. And after that moment, you feel so rejuvenated. It's like you recharge your batteries, but it's just Sunday morning. You have the whole day to do nothing, but you're already ready to start the week. And the point here for you is to find your frame of reference and to find what you want to compare with it. If your life is flashing and you have a pleasure of memories, or are your days direct, or do you think that the life is so long and you don't want to do do you don't know what to do with it? Well, I guess now you know the answer. You just need to compare something and something else. Thank you.